Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you have a March birthday and would like a birthday shout out, please visit the community tab on my main channel, Back to Ashes. Please leave your birth date in the comments. Your birthday must be listed on that community tab as I will not be acknowledging birthdays left in the comments of this video. It does get a little hard to keep up with both things, so please head over there and list your birthday. If you are new to the channel and enjoy what you are listening to, we would love to have you as part of the Back to Ashes family. So please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and get ready for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Crazy Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. Hello everyone, I'm interested in opinions on how to handle an unbelievably out of line 22 year old girl and her boyfriend who stay up all night long doing cocaine, getting more obnoxious than loud all through the night. Property manager and cops don't seem to care. They live directly below me and I am the only tenant who really is affected by this. They know I've complained and are now intentionally blasting the TV up to and past 3 a.m. Technically, it's the girl's apartment and she doesn't work. I know her father has money and is paying the rent. With a little effort, I obtained the parent's phone number and I'm considering sending them a message letting them know what their daughter really is doing and it needs to stop now. I know the father is the doctor and would think he'd want to know what his daughter does, as in the cocaine, all night. But regardless, I feel like I've reached a limit of what I can take and since they pay the rent are ultimately responsible. What are your thoughts on this? Recently, a couple and their two kids moved in below my roommate and I. Pretty much my worst nightmare, considering I don't care much for kids. I've felt so lucky that the building has only been occupied by people our age who typically only stay for around six months to a year and then leave. It's a college city. I never considered myself misophonic, but I definitely think I am now. One of their children, as I have now learned, is six and has some sort of condition that causes them to stem excessively by stomping, constantly and howling, loudly. I feel a bit bad calling them neighbors from hell, as my roommate and I are both neurodivergent, and this is a child we're talking about, but good lord this child makes so much noise. You can hear it from the street. Add a two-year-old and the fact that they just moved here from another country and have no furniture, every sound echoes, rattles the floors, walls, and windows, the works. I went downstairs and politely asked why they're being so loud and if they could keep it down, and the father told me that they're just doing normal things. Our furniture is in a shipping container and we won't have it here for two weeks. And then he asked, what do you want us to do about it? Dude, what do you want me to do? Just suffer through the insane noise that shakes our walls and windows, disturbs our pets, and my sanity? I've taken up wearing earplugs almost constantly. To add to the cacophony, our upstairs neighbors have gotten even louder and decided that 11 at night and 7 in the morning is the best time to stomp around with shoes on in the bedroom, drop shit that sounds like it weighs 10 pounds, slam doors, the works. 
The best part? The city just decided that for the next two and a half months, they'll be ripping up the water main on our street, starting at 7.30 in the morning. Excavators, jackhammers, you name it. Until May. I've actually thought about breaking the lease to escape this madness. What would you do if you were in my shoes? I moved back into my old apartment building four and a half years ago because it was quieter there. However, there were renos in some units. Guessing repairs was one. About a year and a half ago, my NFH moved in. They are constantly banging, stomping like a toddler, dropping things and using something that sounds like a folding treadmill. Stomping triggers my anxiety from a previous NFH. Tried not to let this bother me, but over the last six months, it's gotten worse. They rarely leave their apartment and are noisy all throughout the night sometimes. Two weeks ago, after an entire day of clog dancing, it got really quiet. There were moments, but it mostly stopped. Went away for a few days last week and came back to a note taped to my door from management saying they are replacing the flooring upstairs on the 1st. It was initially quiet when I returned, and this led me to assume that they were gone. Oh, but I was wrong. About 8 p.m. Friday, they started their usual antics and didn't stop until roughly 11 p.m. last night. I managed to get some sleep, but they started right back up at 7.30 this morning, and I couldn't fall back asleep. Before anyone mentions it, White noise and earplugs don't help. My 72-year-old mom stayed here recently and could hear the vibrations without her hearing aids in. Yeah, it's that bad. I haven't gone to management because they aren't that approachable about shit. And I didn't want a neighbor retaliation on top of some other things I'm dealing with. That said... I plan to try and track management down. Tell them I got the memo and that it was noisy this weekend. My question is, would it be too much to inquire about the flooring they are putting in? And if this neighbor is actually leaving? All right, I'm sick and tired of this. I play by the rules. I'm not loud and I hardly complain. I feel like I should or at least approach them. I live alone and been here since April. First off, my bathroom and kitchen sits right above their kitchen and bathroom. And the shower pipe and the kitchen sink from both apartments run to the same pipe into the basement. I was mindful of this. The landlord told me, so if I heard them running water, I would wait five minutes after I hear them stop running it. They don't have the same courtesy, and it's like living on top of a bunch of elephants. Now, I'm a night worker. I met the mother downstairs before I started back to work and told her this and said I understand our showers and kitchen is on top of each other, which is fine. If I come home from work between 7.30 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. because I have to give report before leave to take a shower at the same time. She said, yes, you do what you have to do. You work at least. Then she started talking about how she had two jobs. She's really nice. I, I know she's not the problem. Her kids and grandchildren, on the other hand, are the neighbors from hell. None of them work. Her grandkids are late 20s. They are using her. So the first morning I come home from work at about 8 a.m., no one is using the water, so I take a shower. Not even a minute into it, I hear the toilet flush downstairs. Someone stomping around. 
and they banged on the ceiling super loud. So I turned the water off and they used their kitchen sink. I wait till they were done, freezing cold in the shower, then tried to take another shower again. Not even a minute later, I hear bang, 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 really loud, and they turn the kitchen sink on and off a thousand times. I just finished my shower so I can go to bed. I have work later. So, after the shower, I go to bed, and bang, I hear the front door, and their door slams so loud it shakes my apartment. I couldn't fall back asleep for another hour. It was now 12 p.m., they did it again at around 3 p.m., and this cycle continued, so I moved to another room where I can't hear it so bad. According to the landlord, they slammed the door so loud that they broke it and had to fix it twice since I've been here. He said it's not fixable anymore. Not only that, but if you try to use any water whatsoever between 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., they bang on the ceiling so loud and turn their water on and off. The landlord said there's no reason they should be doing this. The pipes are fine. He told me to ignore them and live as I please. He's in the process of kicking them out. But there's not much he can do right now. He said it could take another six months to a year. They have people living there that are not on the lease. Seriously, though. What would you do? Would you confront them again? Would you call the cops again or the manager? Seriously, I'm going out of my mind and really thinking about moving out of my apartment. My neighbor has been living in my apartment building small four-unit building directly across from my unit for almost two years. This 25-year-old woman has been having people live with her randomly off and on, and they have just been awful, loud all hours of the night, making threats against other tenants, their visitor parking in the driveway during snowstorm blocking the entire pathway. She does not respond at all to conversation. We tried the civil approach and she went mental at us for even trying to reason with her. Besides, the banging on the walls, moving furniture around all hours of the night, and staying up all night being ignorant. She also does things such as constantly flush the toilet when you are in the shower, eavesdropping, and then doing whatever she can to mess with you. Example, I say I'm going to lay down for a bit. 30 seconds later, she blasts music. And, to top it all off, I was discussing back in January that we had to take our garbage out the following day. And in the middle of the night, she had a friend remove our trash bin off the property. And when my mother went out to set trash on the ground beside all the bins, that neighbor went out and assaulted her and went psychotic. Due to the housing crisis in my province, my management is struggling to get tenancy to accept a proposal for a hearing. This neighbor is psychotic and needs to be evicted. It's gotten to the point of threats from her and groups of people who show up that I don't even feel safe going downstairs around and make sure if I do have a weapon up my sleeve for my own protection. For reference, her name is Adrian, and she is a freaking nightmare. So if any landlords happen to see this from Halifax and someone in their mid-twenties named Adrian happens to be trying to rent out a new apartment when she finally gets kicked out. Beware of what you are in store for. I'm writing here to get real responses. What do you guys think should be done? So, me and my wife have an apartment in a building that has 10 floors. We live on the last floor. On each floor, there's two doors that face each other. 
We moved here three years ago, and about a year ago, moved this woman with her two children. Both are boys. One is about 17, another 10, probably. Before they moved, they were doing renovations of their apartment, and their labor would clean their shoes on our doormat, throw garbage in the hallway, leave blocks for months on the stairs, and make the elevator dirty every single day. After they moved, they brought with them a puppy, a female puppy at that. Very smart and beautiful dog. For the first few weeks, they kept the dog inside, and when it grew up, they started leaving her in the common hallway. We spoke to them about it, but their excuse was, the dog spoils our furniture. It started to stink to the point that our downstairs neighbor called police like three times, which was of no use. For where I live, police don't really care about this type of shit. Her kids clean the place maybe once in three days. We reached the building management. They too couldn't do anything as this woman is extremely stubborn, uneducated, and rich, of course. Cleaner assigned my building management, who stopped visiting our floor because she complains of smells and dog feces. We, being nice human beings, felt bad for the dog and offered to give it to a better home to which they agreed, but dog is big now and nobody adopted her. We tried to keep it, but our cats aged five and seven freaked out. The downstairs neighbor complained to animal control and they also couldn't do anything after several complaints. They put a tag on the dog and told them it's not a pet anymore. Dog must move outside like other feral animals. Now, the real problem is the poor dog started living around the building, and whenever neighborhood children came from the outside, they bring her inside and the dog remembers the hallway, and their door stays open there for a night and poops and pisses on their floor. Spoiled our doormats twice, and this uneducated idiot throws raw chicken for the dog, which stinks later on, and they don't care about cleaners or cleaning for the day. We sprayed expensive spray, which dogs don't like, but a few days later, it still comes. Apart from the dog, this woman leaves dead plants, dirty bottles, garbage outside, and parks her car like a five-year-old would, which is annoying to everyone else. But... Everyone else isn't bothered as much as us because we are facing her directly. She makes sure the place stays dirty. Police can't do anything. We have spoken to her nicely and aggressively also, but to no avail. Building management also is useless. I ask other people to please help us find a solution to this and tell me how to teach her a lesson without getting in trouble. Our next door neighbor is the single dad of two kids in his mid-thirties. He likes to put these huge speakers out in his backyard and crank rap music. When he's doing yard work, grilling, hanging out, you name it. He does this during the day and at night, on weekdays and weekends. His music gets so loud that my husband and I have to yell over the music just to speak to one another when we're out in our yard. And when we're in our house, we can hear the music over our TV, and the bass shakes our windows. Yesterday, I sat down outside with some watercolor paints and my small speaker, playing Neil Young at a low volume. A bunch of his guys' friends show up, and they crank WAP so loudly that I cannot even hear my own music and can barely hear myself think. My husband usually messages this guy on Facebook when his music is unreasonably loud. They used to work together and are Facebook friends. And he'll politely ask him to turn the music down. 
90% of the time, he responds and turns it down. The other 10%, the message goes unread for a while, and it takes a bit before it's ever turned down. Still, we try not to be jerks or go bang on his door or yell at him when he doesn't turn it down. This time, my husband messages him. 10 to 20 minutes go by and the music is still blaring. My husband can see him on his phone in his backyard. So he walks over to the fence, it's chain link by the way, and asks him politely to turn it down. This was the neighbor's response. Uh, fuck you. I'm not turning my music down, motherfucker. So my husband stood right there in front of him and called police dispatch while they yelled and cussed and laughed at him. The dispatcher said, Well, I'll send an officer out there to change their mind. Even he could hear the loud music blaring through the phone. A few minutes later, an officer shows up and I'm picking up parts of the conversation. I heard, we're having a barbecue. Are you serious? It's Saturday. And, well, he instigated it. Talking about my husband, of course. Then, after a bit of back and forth, the neighbor and his crowd of friends cheer, hoot, and holler. As the officer walks back to his car, and they crank their music even louder. The officer came to our house and politely explained to us that there was nothing he could do until after 10 p.m. He said that our town has quiet hours at night after that time, but no one set noise ordinances or codes. He said that if they did, he'd be able to write him a ticket, but he can't. He said he was so sorry he couldn't do anything else and that if it's still happening even one minute past 10 p.m. to call, and he'll gladly go over and shut it down inside him. This went from approximately 3.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Keep in mind that the two small children were there during all of this. At one point, two toddlers were in the fenced-in portion of the front yard, just wandering around aimlessly, while all the adults were on the other side of the house, partying and intoxicated in the backyard. They were totally unsupervised. We endured hours of noise so loud that we couldn't even hang out in our own backyard and couldn't even hear anything in our home over the music. We had no peace in our home for six hours, and something tells me that this is only going to get worse since we called the cops on them, and because the weather is warming up and they're starting to spend a lot more time outside. This guy owns the home, so I can't call a landlord. There's no HOA. There's no noise ordinance. And our houses are incredibly close to one another. I know the mayor's wife, and I messaged her about this. I asked how we could get a noise ordinance, and she said to put our names on the agenda for the next town hall meeting. That will likely be a long and tedious process, and I don't know if it'll work. If it does work, there's no telling how long it will take for this change to happen. I really don't know what to do. Do you all have any thoughts, suggestions, or advice? I lived in my neighborhood for the last 15 years. I've seen my neighbors across the yard change once and my neighbors across the street twice. The second time those neighbors changed, it was when we got our neighbor from hell. It's not the wife or the three kids we have issues with. It's the husband. Our issues started last year when they moved in. I'm not exactly a neat person. My yard isn't cluttered and stuff, even when the township I live in not having ordinances dealing with this. He's had problems with the large steel tractor wheels used for decorations that I'm in the middle of restoring. He's had problems with the length of my grass, 
He had a problem when his 16-year-old daughter asked me to take her and her sisters to Walmart for them to buy sodas and other snacks for them to study since their parents were out of town celebrating an award that he had won. He had problems with me plowing out our mailboxes during our last plowable snowstorm. I had plowed the box and saw his wife struggle trying to shovel her way out of her walkway. So I did the neighborly thing and plowed out their driveway and shoveled their walkway out. She repaid me by making me some of the best hot chocolate I have ever had since she used real vanilla bean and real cream with milk. It was so good. But our latest problem happened last night. Our drive sits approximately 50 feet off of a tree line of Arborvide on the left-hand side where you would go up the hill. On the right side, there is another tree line that separates us from the neighbor, along with an embankment that is approximately 25 feet straight up. It makes part of my yard unusable since it makes it wetland. The neighbor in question lives across the street from both of us. One of our property lines sits in the middle of my property, and the other sits about a quarter of the way down from the tree line toward my neighbor's house. The neighbor making the noise is a younger couple, probably in their 20s, and likes working on cars and playing loud music. We have them over sometimes, and he's helped me work on my H2 and my Nissan Titan truck. The noise doesn't bother me too much because there is distance between us and the elevation difference. He had complained so much about it. Really? He's complained about both places since he's a realtor and his place is immaculate. Like it belongs in better homes and gardens and he expects all of our properties to look the same way. He's been complaining about noise all day. He even came over to complain to me about me listening to music in my garage since I'm cleaning out my truck and listening to music. And I don't have my stereo in the garage all that loud. That evening, we had friends over for dinner and we started watching a movie in our basement. About halfway through, there's a knock. I answered it and it's the police responding to a noise ordinance violation. We're shocked. We got fined, and they left. I'm sure it was the neighbor doing this. My other neighbor contacted me this morning and asked if the police came to my door. I responded in the affirmative. We came to the same conclusion that it was the neighbor across the street. I asked him if he heard noise coming from my home. He said no. The cops really didn't think it was that loud either, but... They had to do something to appease the neighbor and show they did something and just fight the ticket. What should I do at this point? I'd hate to sell the home because I love living here. But this neighbor, he is such an asshole. I live off a busy main highway and I'm on the corner. My neighbor Marco across the street has two parking spaces, pretty generous and long. He has a big truck and he could typically only fit his truck in a small car. His wife does not drive in carpool. Marco never has parking so he overflowed to my elderly neighbor's lot, Julie. Never asked permission from her. Marco grandfathered the parking space before she got there. He has taken one parking space permanently with a disabled car. Now, he has another car and he creates a third parking spot in front of her house, effectively blocking her in. Julie has vented to me. She doesn't like this because in case she has to leave for an emergency, she can't get out. I'm writing this and Julie has four cars blocking her in like a jigsaw puzzle. Julie has a parking lot on the other side of her house that is communal, not really assigned. 
Marco has now taken that spot for his guests. Marco frequently has a son-in-law and daughter who live in the park visit him. They live about a half mile away. The son-in-law drives a big Suburban. So, his son-in-law, Phil, asked me if he could park at my place when I'm not home on the weekends. So I said, yeah, sure, I have four parking spaces, and if I'm not home, then I don't see why not. Just trying to be a good neighbor, just trying to help. That was a huge mistake. He now parks his car in front of my bedroom on a weekend, so when he needs to move his car in the middle of the night, I hear the engine and it wakes me up. Additionally, he is now parking over here. Whatever he pleases any day of the week, this was not the agreement. I come home to a big car taking up my driveway, and now my car is sticking out onto the sidewalk. Basically, with all the traffic we get, my car could be hit. I don't understand why you try to be nice to people, and they have to take advantage of you. Like, I didn't have to agree to parking here, and now I have to have a conversation because it's not working. What would you guys do in this situation? Hello all. Sorry in advance, this might be a little all over the place and pretty long, but I just need to get it off my chest and hopefully get some advice on how to handle the situation. I'm also sorry if there's any errors in my grammar. Me and my partner live in an upstairs apartment in a small Midwest town. I'll call him Jay because of the dude who complained. We had a cat who, for the most part, is pretty lazy, only getting zoomies twice a day. We're pretty born people. Jay works at a factory, second shift. He's not even here a lot of the time. Obviously, since he's second shift, he gets home pretty late, but he does his very best to be quiet. Usually just plays a game on his Nintendo Switch, makes a meal, and goes to bed. I've recently been diagnosed with a brain tumor and spend most of my days in bed with a cat. And of course, when I do get up to try to eat or use the restroom, I walk on my toes, even avoiding creaky spots on the floor because of our downstairs neighbors. There's two people living in the downstairs apartment below us. The man is 87 and the woman is 83. The woman is the problem, I'm assuming. We'll get to this. She spends the day pounding on the ceiling of our apartment, the walls, you name it. Sometimes it is when I get up to use the restroom, she repeatedly turns the shower faucet on and off, as well as their vent fan. Sometimes it's if I go to the kitchen. Most times, however, it's when I'm lying down with the cat, in bed, alone, in the house. When my cat gets his zoomies and decides to play, it's a shit show. She starts pounding the ceiling, which scares him and makes him even crazier. When my partner gets home, she seems to follow him wherever he goes and bangs right below him. This can go on for hours. Sometimes me and my partner are woken up by the banging at 3 a.m. They have only talked to us three times about what they think is going on up here, twice to Jay and once to me. The first time they talked to Jay, he promised we tried to be more mindful of noise at night, but also told her we are allowed to walk around in our apartment. The old woman told him, that not only do we stomp around everywhere we go, but that there's constant slamming and heavy machinery being ran in our apartment. He was puzzled and told her we don't have heavy machinery, but she swears up and down it's in our bedroom and we run it all day and all night. He offered to let her look in our bedroom to see there wasn't anything in there, but she denied it. 
The second time, the husband talked to my partner and apologized to him for his wife's behavior, but asked us to keep it down. He told my partner that he's never heard machinery, but assumes he can't hear it because he's going deaf. My partner told him, again, that there is no machinery in our apartment, and he can come back and check himself. Once again, denied. The first time was when the woman confronted me, when I was being picked up to go to the doctor's appointment. She told me that if we didn't stop running the machinery, she was going to call the cops. I tried my best to be nice and ask if maybe the sounds were coming from another apartment, but she insists that it is coming from our apartment. I suggested that maybe she's hearing my fan that I try to use for white noise, since she's constantly banging on everything, but she says it's not a fan. She also accused me of laughing at her and taunting her from upstairs. I should also mention they've reported us to the landlords once so far for using heavy machinery. I talked with them on the phone and explained the situation, and they were very understanding, although they were also confused on what the woman could be hearing. I'm seriously wondering if she is hearing things. I know that she probably does hear us walking around, since she seems to follow us wherever we go in the apartment, but there's really not much more we can do to be quiet. Plus, we're allowed to exist up here, but the machinery and laughing accusations are completely out of nowhere. When I'm laying in bed, I usually listen to music or whatever with an earbud in, so it's not like she's hearing a TV. And like I said, other than a fan, there's nothing that could be confused for heavy machinery. I don't run heat because it's usually pretty hot in the apartment. I recently got noise-canceling headphones from a family member to try to help me, but what is there else I can do? I already have enough stress with my illness, and this is pushing me over the edge. My wife and I recently moved to Henderson, Nevada. I grew up out here and loved the area and people, and never had issues with neighbors growing up. We decided to move back west and escape the purgatory that is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Unfortunately, we aren't rich and our credit sucks, so we decided to rent a little one-bedroom apartment in the Green Valley area for the first year or so to save money. We both lived in apartments for 10 to 15 years in different areas, so we don't foresee any issues. We found a cute little apartment complex surrounded by a golf course and were excited to have a little greenery close to home, since that was the only thing we were really going to miss about Myrtle Beach. We figured the worst thing we'd have to worry about would be a straight golf ball hitting our car or windows, but we weren't really concerned about that at that point. In early November, while moving our stuff into the apartment and out of the Penske truck, we met a seemingly kind 30-ish year old woman holding a maybe two or three year old baby who simply stated, Sorry if the kids are a little noisy. I didn't think much of it. Crying babies don't bother us, much as my wife and I have many nieces and nephews, and we babysit our friend's two-year-old once a week before we relocated. Shortly after moving in, we realized that our upstairs neighbor was in fact a little loud, but not the woman or either of the children, but a man who we didn't even know was there for the first week or so. At first, we thought he was just being noisy while playing video games and watching football. Every other day or so, there'd be two to four hours of loud music, stomping and shouting. 
It wasn't hard to make out what he was saying, since he was literally shouting as loud as he could. He would often shout racial slurs like the N-word. Stupid fucking cracker and stupid ass white boy. My wife and I are both white and again, just assumed he was talking about football or a video game and tried our best to wear headphones, turn up the TV or ignore it. One of the strangest parts was that we never heard the children make a peep. There was stomping in what sounded like furniture being scraped across the floor or slammed onto the ground, but never crying kids or anything like that. This went on for maybe about a month while I started looking into local noise ordinances and how to report a disturbance. One night in December, the noisy neighbor stayed up until 11.30 p.m. with his usual routine of screaming, loud music, and banging. My wife and I are night owls, so we put up with it begrudgingly because he never seemed to make the noise at a time that the front desk of our apartment complex was open in order for us to make a complaint. The following morning, the neighbor woke us up at 8 a.m., just as rowdy as the night before. I called 311 to attempt to make a noise complaint as our apartment office didn't open until 10 a.m. and was told a cop would come by and tell the neighbor to quiet down. I left for work about 10 minutes later, but my wife had the day off and told me the neighbor was silent the whole day. After that, we started seeing the kids on the patio from time to time and heard the youngest crying or screaming once in a while. Normal kid noises, that really didn't bother us. Things were quiet for a few weeks. Then, starting in late January or early February, a new strange vibrating sound began occurring late at night, each night, which was strong enough to shake the whole bedroom and our unit below. The noise was only audible within our bedroom, and the walls and everything attached would vibrate throughout the night. This was annoying, but I figured it would be piping or something uncontrollable in the building itself. We turned on a noise machine each night and slept with pillows on our heads to block out the vibrating noise. Then on February 12th, after having difficulties sleeping due to the loud vibrating noise, I awoke at about 9 a.m. to what sounded like furniture being moved over and over and dragged across the floor of the apartment above me. There was pounding and scraping and extremely loud footsteps, which sounded purposeful. This noise continued until about 3.30 p.m., and I was able to block the noise out with headphones. My wife left for work and my sanity with her. Unfortunately, I let my emotions get the better of me and slammed the roof of my unit three times with a mop handle trying to send the message that they were being ungodly loud but not feeling comfortable enough to approach the neighbor face to face after hearing the term stupid ass white boy and other derogatory statements getting shouted from this apartment multiple times just a few months prior. The noise stopped, and for a moment, I thought I had succeeded in getting my message through. Maybe one to two minutes later, there was a knock on my front door. I'm not a confrontational person at all, but I answered the door to at least own up to the banging on my part. As soon as I opened the door, I was met with a five foot five man who immediately asked, Is that you banging on the ceiling? Yes, I answered. You guys have been really loud since early this morning. Before I could get another word out, the neighbor exploded, shouting, Why wouldn't you just come up and knock on the fucking door like a man? And then he called me the P word, in which I won't say. I admit, having this man shouting at me after keeping me from a good night's sleep for a few weeks and making my home a generally unpeaceful place, I was pretty pissed. 
I don't remember anything that was shouted, but a few highlights were him making fun of my appearance. I have long hair, which he seemed fixated on. He told me he was going to be noisier than ever now, and him calling out that he knew it was me who called the cops. He kept asking, and where did that get you, huh? I told him obviously nowhere, but I'd be happy to call him again. While we were shouting, I saw both of his kids come down the stairs, stare at us, and run back up. Eventually, he started climbing the stairs, which he could still see me through and grabbed his crotch with both hands, telling me to suck his mm-hmm. I took a step out of my door and asked, You would like that, huh? This made him even more upset. He rushed back down the stairs and got within a few inches of my face. I was honestly worried that he was going to hit me, but my pride was way too inflated to back down now. We shouted a little more. He laughed about how loud he was about to be, and I told him that I'll just keep calling the cops every day if I have to, and that I was going to get his ass evicted. I don't actually believe I have the power or ability to do so, but hey, I was pissed. The neighbor immediately went back upstairs to his unit, began slamming on the floor extremely loudly for about five to ten minutes, screaming at his wife or kids or both. Meanwhile, I called 911 and asked them to send someone because the neighbor has said something along the lines of, you want to do something about it? and got in my personal space, which felt like it was only a single step away from a physical threat. The cop came and spoke to me, and the neighbor separately. He advised I no longer get the police involved, but take it straight to the apartment manager. The neighbor was silent the rest of the day. I followed up with a phone call to the apartment complex and told them the story so far. They told me to notify them if anything else happened. Since that date, the noise has been better in some spots and worse in others. The noise from the woman and kids seemed more considerate, while the vibrating at night happening much less often and less intensity, leading me to believe it may be a space heater or something similar that they have control over. Meanwhile, when the male individual is home, the banging and scraping noises are worse than ever. As I type this at 6 p.m., the banging noises have been occurring since around 10 a.m. this morning. The yelling has also resumed, but hasn't been occurring outside of 12 to 7 p.m. lately. He or the people living with him have also started leaving random bits of trash, anchors, kids' toys, etc., strewn across the gravel by my front door. But I'm not sure if this is purposeful or not. I believe I may be looking to break the lease and move somewhere else soon. I enjoyed the amenities and the location, but being in the apartment feels slightly dangerous with this individual above me, and I don't feel comfortable walking to and from my car into the apartment most days. I've started carrying pepper spray in case he attempts something more physical than the last confrontation. I also don't feel comfortable having guests, as I don't know when he'll be screaming racial slurs at the top of his lungs. This morning, I spoke to a kind woman at the apartment front office and they mentioned something about issuing some kind of violation, since this is my second complaint. But I do also fear anything of a retaliatory nature. I have a cat and my wife alone in the apartment some days, and fear that he'll come knocking while I'm at work. She also mentioned that the next step would be getting legal involved, but I have no interest in any of that as I'm not looking to pay any legal fees soon. Any advice or feedback would be greatly appreciated. I know I'm no saint in this whole exchange, but I just want to do what's right for my little family.
And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true neighbor from hell stories. I'd like to take a moment and give a shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Tina Mee, Coatstone Wolf, Luz Crispin, C.A.G., Denise Sess, Samantha Plakes, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Christy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's niece. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for continuing to support BTA. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.